How many times have you heard the phrase, paying rent is like throwing away your money. You've got to buy a house. Well, I'm sick of hearing it. So I'm going to destroy this thing right now by showing you how the cost of home ownership compares to the cost of renting an apartment and investing the difference dollar for dollar. If you're thinking about buying your first home as your primary residence solely because you think it'll be a good investment or you've been hearing you're throwing away money on rent, then stop what you're doing because buying a home will be the worst investment. Keep in mind, this goes out to the people who do not need a house for the space. If you're married with four kids and 10 cats, then you might need a house. The key takeaway here is that buying a house is a lifestyle decision, not an investing decision. You guys have been saying in the comments how much you love my spreadsheets. So I've got a good one for you today, this time with graphs. The first bad thing that happens when you're trying to buy a home is you need to save a significant sum of money. You gotta have enough for the down payment, closing costs, and furnishing your new home. I live in Texas, so all the numbers I'm throwing at you are gonna be Texas averages, that way we can compare everything apples to apples. The average Texas home is worth about $304,000. And typically, first time home buyers are looking to put as little down as possible. I know I was. It is difficult to save 20% for a down payment. So we're gonna go with the minimum allowable down payment for most conventional loans, which is 3.5%. This comes out to just under 11K for a $304,000 home. The average closing cost for a buyer in Texas is about 1.5%. This comes out to about four and a half thousand dollars. This means you need to save about $31,000 before you can even think about buying a home. Now, if you're gonna rent an apartment on the other hand, you still have to save up a small sum of money. The average rent in Texas for a two bedroom apartment is about $1,200. In my experience, this just seems a little low to me. So I'm gonna bump it up to $1,500 per month for this comparison. In order to get a new apartment, you typically have to save up first month, last month rent, and a security deposit. In total for this average Texas apartment, you'll need about 7,250 bucks in the bank. So if this is your situation, you saved up $31,200 and you're trying to make the choice. Do I wanna go with the home route or do I wanna go with the apartment route? These are your two paths. You can put all that money into getting into a house or you can put some of it up to get an apartment and you can put the rest in your stock portfolio. For this comparison, we're gonna assume that all investments in your stock portfolio are in an S&P 500 index fund, which averages about 10% per year. On the other hand, your house will appreciate on average about 4.7% per year. Obviously, some years will be much higher than others, but over the long term, this is what you're gonna be looking at. So let's put both paths at square one. On the left-hand column, I've got expenses, and on the right-hand column, I've got equity or portfolio value. When we're talking about expenses, we're talking about the money that you're throwing away. When you own a home, you will be throwing away money. Now, the down payment doesn't count as throwing away money, and the cost of furnishing doesn't count because both of those things are being utilized. The cost to furnish the apartment, you have all of that furniture as an asset. The down payment, that goes into the principal of your home. However, the closing costs, you can pretend like you just lit that money on fire. You're not getting it back. Now, the security deposit, you might get it back, but we're going to include the first month, the last month, and the security deposit as expenses for now. As you can see at square one, the house has higher expenses and lower equity, while the apartment has lower expenses and higher portfolio value. Let's see how this changes after we look at our first full year of expenses in both categories. After scrolling over to the year one expenses, at a glance you can see it's not looking good for the homeowner. There are much more expenses than the apartment and you have much less equity. Before I get into the breakdown on all these costs, let's look at how your mortgage payment is divided between fees, interest, and principal. When I hover over the breakdown for the first year in mortgage payments, you can see that you are paying 11,540 bucks in taxes and fees, 19,354 in interest, and only $3,199 in principal. All of your mortgage payments all year, you're only gaining $3,200 in equity. The rest of that money, your interest, your taxes, your fees, that is analogous to the rent money that you're throwing away when you rent an apartment. You can just light that money on fire, it's gone. Scrolling back over to the year one cost breakdown, that first chunk at the bottom is your closing costs. The second chunk, $19,000, is your interest. The third chunk is your taxes, $4,900. The fourth chunk is your insurance, $3,875. Then you've got your maintenance, 
For home maintenance, we're going with the 1% rule. This means that over the long term, you're gonna average 1% of the house's value in maintenance fees. Now, some years are gonna be less. Some years you're not gonna have any maintenance, and then other years you're gonna have a lot. You might have to replace your HVAC system. You might have to replace your roof. Your plumbing might freeze one year, and you've gotta deal with water leaks. Over the long term, you're gonna average 1% in fees per year. The next column is your mortgage insurance. Because we went with the lower down payment, just 3.5%, you've got to pay this fee until you get up to 20% equity in the house. On average, the PMI is about a half a percent to 1% in Texas. So we're going to just split the difference. We're going to assume 0.75%. This comes out to 2,200 per year. Hopping back over to the mortgage calculator, you can see in 2034, this is the last year that you have to pay the PMI fee. That section at the top taxes and fees reduces after this year. It is at this time that you have 20% in equity. That happens after 10 years of owning the house. Back to the expenses breakdown, that last little section at the top, $600, that's an HOA. In Texas, the average HOA is somewhere between $100 and $200. I decided to go a little bit cheaper on this one because not everyone's gonna have an HOA. I went with $50 per month, coming out to 600 per year. So in total, your year one expenses for your house, these are expenses not your principal. Your principal goes into your home equity section, but your expenses come out to $38,636, while the expenses for your apartment only comes out to $20,423. What are you gonna do with all this difference? You're gonna invest it in your stock portfolio. You've probably noticed by now that the portfolio of the apartment path has grown substantially. Remember, the dark green sections of the home equity and the portfolio value is the sum that we had at the beginning of the year. And then the lighter green sections is how much we've added throughout the course of the year. On the portfolio value, $2,395 was our 10% gain on that initial sum of money throughout the year. And then the $20,600 is the difference in expenses that you would have had to pay on the house versus the apartment. So in these two paths, if you went down the housing path, you would end up with 28,127 in home equity. And then with the same amount of money, you could have ended up with $46,947 in stocks in your portfolio. It only gets worse from here. Whenever you go to sell your house, you're gonna have another huge chunk of expenses. And there are some reasons, especially for a first time home buyer, why you might be forced to sell your house in the first year or first two years. You might have a job opportunity. You might need to move to be close to family. You might need to get a bigger house because you get married and want to build a family. These are all reasons why if you jump into a house too soon and then you're forced to make a lifestyle change down the road, you're going to be forced to sell your house before you're ready. Scrolling over one last time, this is the final comparison for year one. If you're forced to sell that house, you're going to get hit with this bright orange expense, $25,463. This is your closing costs as a seller. On average, the seller can expect to pay between 6% and 10% of the selling value of the house. In this case, I split the difference with 8%. So when you're looking at your home equity, yes, your house appreciated by $14,288. And yes, you got $3,200 in principal. All of that gets eaten up and then some by the closing costs. This is one of the biggest reasons why you really wanna give pause before buying your first home? Are you really in a position in life where you know you're not going to have to sell too soon? Another point I haven't brought up in this case is capital gains tax. If you sell your house before two years, then you will be subject to capital gains tax. However, in this example, there were no gains because it all got eaten up by fees. So I left it out of this comparison, but that's something else to keep in mind. If you do get lucky and have a significant appreciation on your home, you're not gonna wanna sell before two years. So on that note, let's check out the two-year comparison. Real quick, my first goal is to help you make more money and save more money. If you're finding this valuable, please crush the like button below. It really helps my channel and I would really appreciate it. Back to the sheets. Scrolling down to the beginning of the year two comparison, we can see where we're starting off in this year. We've got 28,127 in home equity and we've got $46,947 in S&P 500 index funds in our portfolio. This is before we pay any expenses. Now scrolling over, let's see where we end up after the second year. You might be thinking the expenses of owning a home should go down a little bit in the second year. You don't have the closing costs after all. You would be right, 
but it's still not looking very good for the homeowner. You can see in total, you've got 34,250 bucks in home expenses. Keep in mind, I'm gonna reiterate this one more time. This is the money that you are lighting on fire. None of this is going into the equity of your home. This is your interest, this is your fees, these are your taxes, this is your maintenance. These are things that you're not getting back. Meanwhile, your apartment expenses have actually gone down a bit in year two. You don't have to pay the additional last month of rent or an additional security deposit. So you're down to 18,918 bucks. So the expenses are lower. And once again, your portfolio of stocks has grown more than what your home equity has grown. On the home equity breakdown, you've got an additional $3,418 in principal this time. Every year, you're gonna get more money towards your principal and less money towards interest. However, it's gonna be a slow process. The 14,960 bucks is from home appreciation. That's the 4.7% we talked about every year. On the other side, the stock portfolio has grown by $4,695 due to appreciation over the whole year. And then the $18,754 is how much money you were able to afford putting into your stock portfolio because you didn't have the added expenses of paying for your house. Clearly after two years, this is short term ownership, but after two years, it is more expensive to own an average home. This is the money that you're lighting on fire than it is to rent an average apartment. And this is even accounting for the fact that apartments on average will increase their rents by 3.2% every year. So you might be asking, in the long term, since your interest payment is slightly going down, is that gonna be enough after five years, after 10 years, to reduce the expenses of owning a house and maybe that cost of renting an apartment will catch up? Let's check out the 10-year comparison. If we look at the red line, again, this is your housing expenses over time, you can see that the numbers are still slightly increasing. Even though you're chipping away at that loan, you're paying off a little bit of principal every year, your interest rate's going down, there are still other expenses that are gonna offset it and then some. For one, the value of your home is appreciating every year. This increases your property taxes. And two, unfortunately, inflation is a thing. The cost of maintenance is also gonna go up as your house appreciates every year. When we compare this to the black line, which is your apartment expenses over time, the price is going up slightly more than the house expenses every year because apartments are gonna increase their rents about 3.2% every year. Now this line is converging on the red housing expense line. However, in the 10 year period we're looking at, it's still not even close. Over a 10 year period, your expenses are gonna be way higher for owning a home in this situation. That's an average house in Texas and an average apartment. On top of all that, the gap between your stock portfolio and your home equity is rising every year. Now I can already hear you all in the comments. What if I can find a below average house? And what if my only options in a big city are an above average apartment? Well, quickly, I'm gonna run through a 10 year example showing just that. If we look at a more granular level and go by city, you can see that the average home price in Amarillo is about 214,000. While if you are comparing that to a more expensive apartment, say in Dallas or Austin, the average price is gonna be closer to 1600 per month. So let's make this comparison. The average house in Amarillo compared to the average apartment in Austin or Dallas. When we look at the 10 year line and bar graph, once again, the black bars represent your portfolio value and the red bars represent your house equity. The black line represents your apartment costs per year the red line represents your housing cost per year. You can see that at year eight, the portfolio value and the home equity converge. And at that point, you are actually building more home equity than you are portfolio value. At that point, the expenses are also very close. However, the housing expenses are still slightly higher. Now you've probably noticed there are some shenanigans happening at year 10, because I'm showing you what happens when you sell your house at the end of 10 years. And remember, this is comparing the cheaper Amarillo house to the more expensive Dallas or Austin apartment. You managed to go nine years. You didn't have to move to chase a better opportunity. You didn't have to move to get a bigger house because you had kids. You didn't have to move to be closer to family. You went 10 years. And finally, at the end of that 10th year, you sold. But because of the closing costs, you still lose out to just renting an apartment for 10 years. So which team are you on? Are you in the group of people that are renting an apartment or are you like me and my wife, Natalie, 
you're in the group of people who bought their house maybe a little prematurely. We bought our house before we necessarily needed the space. If you're like me, you're probably wondering, is there a light at the end of the tunnel? If you're interested in learning how your home can be your best investment, then check out part two of this series. I'm gonna link it right here next week. In the meantime, if you're interested in beating the S&P 500, you can check on this video where I show you how dividend growth investing can beat the market. Till next time.